Right then, we've got a bit of peace. Let's look at the beautifulness. The sun's coming out at last. I've just walked all the way down from the top there, taking photos as I go. It was very grey earlier. It's only just started. We should have blue sky now for the rest of the walk up here. That's good. And of course, I'm out of the wind here. I can do quite a peaceful video. Um, I sometimes go down that bit, but it's, it does be very boggy um, round the corner, and, and it was very overgrown. <sighs> yeah, I'm making the most of the season of the non cow as well, actually, while I'm here. familiar picnic area for many many people this is and it would have been an old shelter of some description in the past looks really good for it to have had a some sort of settlement here doesn't it out, out of the north wind fisherman's outfit or something or shepherds yeah, I'm still feeling a bit achy from my big walks over Cheddar, by the way. Because uh, I hadn't done the hills, don't forget, over there for a while. Priory over there. Crook's Peak right ahead. Weston over there. I came on the number one bus. They've, you know, they've had it open air throughout the winter. That just shows you, really... They're either shorter buses or it's milder and people will still risk going out, out in the open air. And it's healthier if you think about it, especially with all the people that come to stay at Pontins from Birmingham and places like that who could bring viruses with them. Um, having the open air bus could help aerate the bus more. Anyway, what I'm doing today, I'm using little Sony video because I'm having trouble charging up the Kodak. So I've done some, a little bit of video in with that and it's pr probably nearly ready to expire. I don't even know if it would ever charge at home. It does, no, it, when I'm out, it does at home. I might need to buy a new charger. I've had that, I've had one for quite a few years now. It's been well used, it's been all over the country. I've used it a lot and it's been absolutely brilliant. But I've got a feeling it's starting to play up a bit now. So I, I will go over to some of the big stores and have a look around for a new charger because <sighs> not what it's not letting me do is um charge up as i'm on the move it sometimes lets me do it <sighs> anyway we're, going, we're having a bit of a walk around today And I'm using little Sony camera for video. Although, like I say, people who maybe have seen videos of me out here will recognise this. But as I've told people, I don't share that many. Now, one's come up on Facebook when I had the really good Sonys of me walking down on the volcanic area here looking for rock art and rocks and everything the geology that was a good one that's just come up and like i said they are my visual diaries and reflective journals so instead of going home and writing a book i keep discs memory cards that's what i do i keep discs and memory cards but I also forget where I put stuff. I'm terrible, you know. And, and then sometimes I make so many duplicate copies because I've forgotten where I've put the last lot. In the end, stuff is recorded quite a lot. 
quite often. <laughs> yeah, then I attempted that walk, but unless the farmer's been down and clipped it back, or the National Trust, whoever it is, it's very, it was very, very overgrown, that route going down there. So, and very, very muddy. Now, obviously, when the cows are, it seems to me they'll be back out again. Uh, Marchish, end of March, maybe middle of March. Who knows? Ah, uh, round about that time, February's a good time to get all your the season of the non-cow it walks in. So I mean, I've got um, Rington to Congressbury to do. I've got Westbury Sub Mendip to do to Cheddar. And of course, I, I can avoid and go on the road if I want. I, I got, um, what's that other one I've got to do? I've got to do, um, well, Wells to Cheddar. That hasn't been done for two years. Or I can do it the other way around Cheddar to Wells. I don't really mind. And I can still do pretty. And be, to be quite honest, I could do pretty and end up at Wells. You know, do go over to the pretty mineries, do that, and then go down through Ever Gorge to Wells. Um, all in this, which is all mainly done when it's no when there's no cows. Now, any once again, anyone who's been following me for the past ten years will, will know that I was surrounded and chased on three occasions by cows. And, and I, it was real, and I only just managed to get over barbed wire fences and very wobbly walls. I know I'm repeating it, but this is for people who've never listened to the other tapes. I might never. I mean, I save them all over the place, and the web links come through YouTube. So if anything happens to YouTube and they don't actually transfer the stuff to another site, which could happen, and you've got to download it all again. I mean, I've put a lot on my fa family tree, but there's a lot I haven't done yet. It's like I did a great big thing with very, very primitive cameras. Um, of my Somerset Churches project, where mainly I, I mainly used to cycle around all the churches, but only this side of Glastonbury Tor. I didn't really get over to Froome, Shepton Mallet Way. Somerset's a big county, but I had planned to do it if I'd had a vehicle, but I haven't got a vehicle now. But I've still got all those videos I did of my visits to those churches. But they were worth quite... the narration's fine. But some of the visual aspects, because they were very basic cameras, um, are quite primitive really, but it's still a record in time. And it was unique to me because I used to cycle all the way over to Glastonbury, visiting all the churches on the levels. And if I was doing a bit of family tree for people I knew locally, I would be recording graves. I would go in, inside churches and taking photos and talking about the inside of the church, which other people have done, of course. But it was one of my little projects I started when I was about eight years old, when I had a brownie camera. And me and my mates, we would cycle out or walk, not so many churches, but we did Western Zoy then, Shed Zoy. We did a few churches, and when I was 16, I drew with charcoal the inside of St. Mary's Church in Bridgewater. It was a piece of my artwork. I always liked, for some reason, I fell in love with church architecture when I was a very young person. And, and oh, my dad and my parents were were lo love reading and they loved anything to do with history, both my parents. And, you know, my dad would always take us to the local museum. And he introduced me to the Quantocks when I was a small child. So I've got a lot to thank them for. And we always had loads of books. Books were very, very important when we were kids. And you could bet your life 
you would get a book for Christmas. You always got a book for Christmas. And I've still got some of mine. I've still got my first Bible I was given when I was nine. I've got some lovely nature and science books. I mean, I was loved that sort of thing when I was a young kid. I really, really loved everything to do with nature and science. Of course, later I went on to study biology, chemistry, and some physics in more depth as an adult in higher education. And I loved it. My own education at secondary school was not brilliant. It was still old school where girls didn't do physics or chemistry, you just did biology. You didn't do woodwork or metalwork, you did cookery and needlework. So, so you know, it was a deprived, for mere boys as well really, um, experience. And when it came to my, GCS, my GCEs, you could do maths or English literature. It wasn't compulsory to do maths. So in the end, I chose English literature because who liked maths back then? But I grew to like maths as I developed my science skills and knowledge. I, I still found it difficult though, but I actually enjoyed doing maths. I wanted to know how it worked. And I still do, but I can't retain anything. What is it? Someone could show me I forgot about fractions, for example, now. I could probably remember again once I'd done it. Um, you know, I've always wanted to, to really learn quadratic equations, and apparently I have done them and didn't realise I was doing them. Things, it's just basic stuff. I did try and learn, and I think some people do have a block. I mean, most of my kids have got it blocks with maths so it could be some sort of thing that just doesn't click in your head but I think it is possible to learn and overcome it when you see how it functions you know which is what happened when I did my science degrees I could see the relevance of all these equations I was doing they made sense but when I was 10 and someone said, you've got to put a dot here, decimal point, right? Do you know what? I could not get that through to my mind, how you had to have a dot. Because it was never explained properly. That it was a way of separating, say, the tens from the tenths or whatever, you know. And I had this thing about it, this decimal point. It was like, what is this thing? I always remember that when I was about 10, because we had to train for the 11 plus, which I failed, like most people. The 11 plus was designed for middle class kids who had a broader vocabulary, more sort of skills, if you like, uh, in some ways, um, and, and would be coached to get through it. One of my sisters passed it. My sister Valerie passed the 11 plus, but her, my dad, he was a bit of a weird. He wouldn't let her go to the grammar school. Now, I did get accepted at the grammar school to do A-levels. But my sister, who was banned from the grammar school by her dad, and I had to live with her because my mum had died, she, um... Anyway, I left home after that. Over and out, someone's coming. <laughs> 